What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Coffee Club Podcast, episode 70 today. We hope that you enjoyed our special episode 69. We had some fun with that one. For anyone who didn't get the joke, that's why we were naked. We weren't just like <laughs> feeling ourselves that day. Because we were dead as well. We were feeling ourselves that day. I was feeling pretty good about myself. Feeling yeah. ourselves most days that we filmed this show, but we did hype up episode 69 a little bit going into it. So I think there was a bit of a sense that we had to do something, but it's like, what can you really do in the confines of this show? And I think getting naked and not saying anything about it was the best way to go about it. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys saw this, but about 30 people just commented nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's exactly. And then there was like two comments that were like, why are these guys not wearing clothes? So that was definitely the that's response. That's the reaction we wanted. Dr- dreams do come true. Yeah, that's the yeah. reaction we wanted. We got there. So, so we'll, it's all down here from here. Yeah. Very happy about that one. But we're back here today, another week, a race week for the boys, heading to Boston this week. So most of the show is going to be about that. First off, just want to get out of the way talking about definitely the biggest news story that dropped the bombshell that was the news about Peter Ball testing positive for EPO, which for those who don't know in America, he's an 800 meter runner from Australia and it's like massive news in Australia. He's a very big icon, like transcends the sport and pretty much we're not really going to talk about it much today. Just that's kind of why we're getting out of the way because it's just happened and we're definitely it's one of those ones where you just got to let the dust settle i think before you can uh, make any judgments or say anything about it so i mean yeah we'll just see what happens to that one but there's not really much to say that wouldn't be i think kind of stupid or just to yeah rush to make any judgments at this point so yeah we i feel like the safest thing says that we were gutted to hear it yeah i mean everyone i think was yeah Yeah. (laughs) just sadness and shock and we'll see what happens with that one and so I guess we'll check back in, but yeah, that's really all we can say about that. Cause a couple of people did reach out about talking about it, but there's nothing to say at the moment. We'll see how that one plays out for now, but moving on from that, I guess before we get into the race week stuff, we'll do a little update on myself because last week I talked about how I was coming off a little boo-boo on my knee, falling over on the ice. I often think back to that moment and I'm just like, cause in the moment I fell right next to Sage and Sage just looked at me like, what are you doing? Like, and I'm That's like, she looks at me all the time. <laughs> looks like, like, she look, literally yeah. anytime I see Sage at a workout or training session, she looks at me, he's like, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Like that kind of look like, so I, I expect it, you at that point. I know that exact look. Yeah, that look, I can imagine it for you. It's just like, oh fuck. Like, yeah. So I just look back and just like, she's looking at me like that. I'm just like. You wouldn't think that I sprained my M- my MCL at, at in that moment. Oh yeah, so that's the update. Is I did go see the doctor and I have a grade one sprain in my MCL, which don't really know where that is. Somewhere in my <laughs> somewhere in my knee and a potential bone bruise in the femur. So that's what I'm dealing with. So pretty much what that means is it just hurts and it sucks and I need to let it recover and it's going to take a bit more time than I would have liked because it's a ligament injury compared to. I don't know, stuff that heals quicker like a muscle injury. So, yeah, I was obviously not racing Boston. And, like, I guess the rest of my indoor season, which is just Milrose, is all in question mark right now. So, your boy has been hitting the pool. You can catch me at the rec center with all the old men uh, just doing v- my thing. Vibing out. Just, just vibing, vibing out. Yeah. Dude, actually, I got to say, I think every time I go into a cycle of cross training, it's a completely different experience. Really enjoying aqua jogging right now. I don't know what it is about it. I don't think I'm going that hard. Like... I don't know, maybe that's why I can just like chill and zone out a bit. But previously I was on the bike and the elliptical, the stationary bike that is. And because that's what we have in our gym, man, those get old real quick. Mm. George mm. would probably know about that. <laughs> like, Yeah, they do, especially the bike. Yeah, they get old real quick. So something, at least I am, even though I'm moving at a very slow pace, when I aqua jog, I am at least moving. And I you think- You headphones? I go headphones. I put my waterproof. AirPods in. Really? Yeah. Risky. Are yeah. they waterproof? No. Well, I think technically. Water, like, maybe like water the on yeah. Yeah, but you just got to do it. For some reason, in these, in these rec centers, they don't they don't blast music. I don't know what they like. What's going on with that? But it's just like silent in there, apart from just like little kids making annoying sounds. So I put the AirPods in. Just keep my head above the water. They definitely do get wet. Like they definitely do get wet. And I just I'm like it's just one of those risks. The one of those things well, that you, you got if you run if you run with airpods in the rain like true there's water there there's water maybe they're a little resistant maybe they're a bit resistant but you i wouldn't go oh let's just do a tumble turn an actual swim. swim yeah 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 <laughs> Be in, um seen morg some some 
podcast reeks then. We need, no, I need, I do you need to wear a uh, uh, brother's uh, club swimming cap. <laughs> yeah. Poor Simple swim, swim Club. That that is does, does the Poor Simple Swim Club squid. have... S- poor Simple Squid Club. What poor is Simple it? Squid Club. That's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, the name yeah. of it. <laughs> poor Simple Squid Club. Does it have like an aqua jogging like branch? It literally, if you're in the water and you're a member of the squid team, then yeah. It counts? Yeah. All right, well, next time I'll put my... You know, that actually does kind of make sense to put the swimming cap on and have the AirPods under it yeah. for a little mm-hmm. bit of protection. A little bit of protection. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, Chris Hall, Ollie's brother, That's he talked about it when he was on the show probably 15 episodes now yeah. or 10 episodes, and it's his swim club, and he gave us some swim caps of it. So very proud to be part of that. Uh, what would you call it? Just a club, I guess. A, it's brother, a, it's a brotherhood. A, this is a brotherhood, really. Yeah, it's it, it's a it's a way of life. It's a way of life. <laughs> it's a mindset. It's a mindset. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how swimmers like do it. Do it. Yeah, it's tough. Eh? It's terrible. Yeah, I mean, like that was the one thing that because my brother was a was a great swimmer, uh, national champ, uh, going through school and swimming is just hard because you can't really talk to anyone when you're exercising because you're obviously you know submerged you're looking at a black line like there's no scenery like you can do in running and it's just like you go to the same place twice a day two hours early mornings go to the lift like you're not really like outside doing things and i think my brother was always envious of that with running because with running you could like go a different route um different trails different roads and breathe can, fresh air yeah breathe fresh air you can talk to people you can go with runs with different people and be able to like communicate and enjoy the exercise with them whereas in swimming you're kind of in your own head which is also also not great. All the time. Dang, that's a dangerous place. Dangerous place to be. Experience. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, swimming is an extremely tough sport. Like, and I think you take appreciation for how tough it is when you like are aqua jogging and, and how, just like yeah. in the pool. Like, a how lot. much better running is as well. Just yeah, that our sport is just we have a lot more variety and options in just enjoyment. I just <laughs> like level of enjoyment. I get so I don't know how a swimmer. I guess this is just their everyday life, but. I feel so terrible just like when I get out for the next like five hours with all the chlorine and stuff on my skin. I don't know how you do that every so this single is, day. So this is the thing, like when I, I went to Trinity Grammar, which like at the t- at time was a massive swimming school, like had a lot of top of the swimmers there. I trained with Kenny Toe, who uh, was a really, really good swimmer. He was world champ, indoor short course, I think, medalist. Um, but uh, we, we would train there and like the routine you would have getting out of the pool. So like you would be, say, so we started, we get in at 4.15, do exercises, start around quarter to five, two hours in the pool. And then once you get out, there's a routine. So like they have all these showers and me, my brother, uh, Chris, and like our mates, like Keegan Street, who was a good swimmer, Josh Simat, good mate of mine. Like we'd have, we'd go in the shower, cold, hot shower. We'd use shampoo every time, always use shampoo. And like, I know you're going to hate this, but because we didn't want chlorine in our hair. Makes sense. We wanted to get it out because... The problem with chlorine in your hair, like during the day, just it feels like greasy and grimy and it's just not a very nice feeling. So there's certain shampoos and conditions you can use to like not be super intensive with the chemicals, but just to be able to wash out the shit in your hair. And then after that, um, moisturizing process. Yeah, I need to do that. Moisturizing process. You literally moisturize your whole body. Twice a day. Twice a day. With with like a non-scented moisturizer that's like, not too like you know you can get like the really deep like uh like super moisturizing ones you get like the lighter ones because you don't want to over moisturize yeah and this one was good just a little bit moist so, yeah a little bit moist yeah. a little bit moist Gonna moisturizer twice a day so that was the, the routine to do and still you would still have that chlorine feeling so it yeah. does it is brutal yeah so i gotta get some moisturizer on i guess hopefully i'm not experienced this for too long but yeah it's kind of one of those ones where you just take it day by day i don't think uh Dathan doesn't have any experience with an MCL strain. I've found an injury that he hasn't had. I knew you'd be able to do something like <laughs> yeah. that. That's I what I've been it. looking for this whole time. Like so that's tick that one off the bucket list. Take that, Dathan. I've about done you for once. So It's not a stat you want to have on the <laughs> no. team. There's not many things Dathan hasn't tried. Yeah, seriously. But so Dathan's uh, motto, I'll try anything once. <laughs> yeah. I'll try any injury once. <laughs> Seriously, honestly, it does make him a great coach. So we thank him for what do he thank him for what his, he put his body for his through for twenty, yeah. for 20 we thank, years. We thank him for his service with injury. <laughs> we thank him for breaking his body down. Yeah, so yeah. we could so we could build our bodies. He to, now has to the, the knowledge to build us up. Yeah, it is so amazing. It is very impressive. And he's yeah. been amazing with this. But yeah, it is one of those ones. that's like yeah, you just got to wait for it to get better. And 
whatever so not that exciting in my life just well i will say this i do strong i don't know if this is a good thing but i do believe that if you're cross training a lot you can get way fitter quicker than you can from just running i don't know if you guys believe that I, I, it's a I, different type of fitness i don't have an opinion because i've never cross trained in my life it's a different type of fitness it is a different type of fitness so it doesn't it's not Jordy, like Jordy's translates. the best one for that to talk to about it i'm out of that conversation i, do, I have no idea but, but you Jordy, can definitely get too fit for your exactly. body to handle it's dangerous it's a dangerous fitness because when you come back you're like aerobic system can be super good mm -hmm. and just like ready to rip yeah but then like your, your actual physical body yeah. it's a cursed just like, it's a cursed fitness chill but that's that is <laughs> if i don't want to cross train that is my excuse is i say i get fit really easily from running oh that's definitely the best excuse not to cross train. <laughs> so i don't want to get too fit <laughs> yeah. cross training because then when i return to running i'm going to be too fit for my legs mm so and but, then an injury will come up yeah yeah that is a good excuse for anyone out there that wants to use that to not cross train i think we've used that a lot mm. i when you get to a certain point though where i'm like two weeks in now and like the, it's not like the finish line is like necessarily within like a day or two it's like all right we'll get some cross training fitness in and then <clears> you can just the difference to running well the biggest difference is you can do sessions every day yeah you can every like for two or three days like normally if i was doing a long thing of cross training like for like weeks, I would do like probably two or three days on one day off in terms of going hard. And yeah, you can really fucking like work your aerobic system by doing that. And also it just makes them go quicker when you're doing it a lot, being able to split it up and doing like the fart legs and stuff. So that's where I'm at getting that cursed fitness from cross training. But all the rest of the guys and gals pretty much on the team are crushing and they're all going into the first race of the indoor season which is very exciting the men are traveling to boston the women are going to new york and i don't know how i've still avoided another boston trip not to not to make this all about me because it's not about me it's about you guys i still have never been to boston yeah I, never that, that shocks there. me that you've never been there race like it just something me, I, I think you've happens. already done that but then you yeah you haven't i something. think that makes you a stronger athlete though <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> boston you know, boston to the boston uh yeah to come yeah. to the boston it's like once you've gone to boston you can never go back type you scenario. only go to boston if you don't think you're good enough to go somewhere else <laughs> yeah. no honestly that is like they should put that in, on top of the stadium because it's like very true like people go to boston and if you don't think this... you're fit enough to race somewhere else come here they go to it boston is... they run some ridiculous time they're like oh i'm in this shape and then they go to outdoor season and run like 10 seconds slower it's like, it, oh. it is sad that like 1307 is a quick time but mentally yeah 1307 in boston compared to outdoors just it's a 1317 probably different maybe even the 1327 it's just a different ballpark some people can give you hope like when grant ran 1253 and then 1243 yeah so outdoors. grant but also grant's grant fisher so it's like <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> yeah that was a that was a silly race. I was looking back on it. He must have been chilling pretty hard in that race. Like if you look at the splits, how hard bad. how hard he closed and stuff. Yeah, yeah he closed like a steam train. I mean, also because the ten k that he ran was not that long after that, so he was in crazy crazy form. Mm -hmm. So he could have run so quick there. Gus, I don't know if this is being picked up on the camera right now, but Gus is just making out with himself <laughs> heavily. He self, hey boys, <clears throat> never never criticize self love. No, he's very good at that. I think that is the thing in Boston. You the you can feel pretty good at halfway or like some amount. The times that people close in, it's like ridiculous. Yeah, it is. I like mean, ground so close crazy. in five minutes for two k. Yeah, you can just like it's not easy to do, no. except at Boston. But, but we are going to Boston. We are going to Boston. <laughs> With that said, we are going to go run some too. PBs at Boston. Yeah. The, funny, the funniest thing is I did see a, a comment on, uh, I don't know, some sort of social media outlet and some people are saying like that OEC is turning into Bowman because we're we're not doing US, US, like some of them aren't doing like cross country races. Why aren't you racing meets. USA's, Ollie? Why am I not racing USA's? Well, <laughs> I'm, I can't, unfortunately. Um, I'll pay I'll pay taxes for the US, but I can't race in the US championship. No. Uh, but the reason is we're running indoor season. So, um boston and new york it's going to be interesting because you've got a boys trip girls trip so segregation, I keep forgetting segregation. so it's it's weird because like i feel Where's like Nathan going? oh what do you think he's going <laughs> he's doing both because they're one day yeah they're one day apart. girls on saturday yeah yeah Dathan's doing after. the classic like because he told us at the start of the year oh i'm not gonna like overdo it this year <laughs> with the travel he's literally overdoing with the travel because he's going to boston he's going to new york and he's going to australia it's all he knows how to do it's all he knows how to do is to grind yeah grind the travel um but you gotta get I'll those be points. You can't, you can't get those points sitting no. at home. 
But this would be How, how's he going to get one k if he doesn't travel? Dude, he's never going to get one k. No one is. The, the new rules are ridiculous. You have to travel like fifty six flights. Um, but in I general, do it. I, I'm excited for this trip because this will be like obviously we had our first like kind of team trip to Austin for the cross race, a bit more chill um, kind of setting. Obviously, we got a lot of points there, but um, <laughs> heading to <laughs> heading to heading we, to we didn't got those World Athletics points. Went, went and got those World Athletic Very points. Huge, huge win for the boys. Um, <laughs> going to an indoor, you know, like indoor track race with uh, Yara and Mario and Jonas yeah. would be really exciting because we haven't really traveled much with them. We haven't been able to like kind of, you know, like the when you go to a meet or you go into a race or championship you have those few days before and, the, and you get to enjoy like kind of where you're at go nice Super restaurants fun. curry and the Bobby highlights tea. some would say the highlights you know <laughs> we're gonna do that with the honest we're gonna do that with mario and yard and leading to just yeah it'd be nice to do it with them because that's one of those things i look forward to as a professional athlete is is traveling as a team because later on the season everyone's going to be kind of diverging to different races and different meets so really looking forward to that i'm sure the girls are in the same kind of boat with new york um i am not racing i'm pacing i feel people like keep forgetting people that. keep messaging me about it and saying like can't wait for you to rip it and race i'm like uh what do you, what do you think racing. would have to happen for you to just stay in the race uh um, what if you like feel so good change my contract what <laughs> change let's make that change uh, there's a huge bonus for going under a certain time i don't know man i think you're so fit right now I am in. I am in. Not that really I want to put trade. this in your head because I don't want you to. No, think no, no. About but it. I, I think I, I have to do. I have to think about it in this way. Like I am going to Boston for a reason. The reason is to pace the boys to this time. Yeah. Um. Because for me, I'm. I'm a, and me and Mario are in a very privileged situation where we don't have to run a time for our Pacific event. And, and like, Yarrod, I think. And yeah, has Yarrod got the mm -hmm. time? Yeah, he's as well? got the fifteen hundred time. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So yeah, so me, Yarrod, and Mario are in a good situation because we have our time. We don't have to like go for a standard whereas george and joe and Giannis want to get that standard want to get out of the way so they can kind of you know okay got that time move forward to you know racing certain races getting certain points placings rankings all that sort of stuff so i feel like as a good teammate i'd love to help these boys out pace them because joe did pace george and i last year did an amazing job getting us to run extremely fast and get that standard so to be able to do that for them is obviously like you know going to help the team out and Milrose is, is a big race for me, so mostly putting my energy towards that mile. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but maybe, maybe, maybe I'll stay in. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I so know. you swing wide, <laughs> F4K, and then you just slot back right in. back in behind you. What, what would you reckon Riss would do? Riss would probably would like that if Riss I actually would, went. Well, if I, I mean, actually went wide, let Joe and, and Jonas and George go, and then just slip behind them and just like just run the rest of the race behind them. There's no, then there's no nothing not to like about that. Was that too many negatives? I don't know. That's a very likable move. Yeah. Is to, I mean, I can't really think of anyone who's actually done that successfully in a distance race where they pace and then finish the race. It's I like guess the stories of marathoners doing it. Yeah. Like we're like supposed mm. to go a half marathon or something. Like all right, I've already gone this far. There's Might there's well clips of people in. in the 1500 doing i guess it's kind of different have you guys seen there's a really famous race that has like ovet and stuff in it i think it might have been the golden mile like back in the day like was, ages that, was ago. it in madison square garden no no it was uh the dream in europe i think it was Oslo. dream mile oh, Maybe. It was i i could be making up. i think it's somewhere in europe and the pacer wins the race because the whole field it wasn't like his pacing was off the whole field just decided to jog and he had such a big lead that he ends up winning the race and it's like a massive race so did, did, does it like it counted then yeah. Is that why I feel like paces these days like aren't into? You know, they're yeah. not, they're, they they have it under their names. So, like if you look at Diamond yeah. League, like, I like you can't stay when they release a that. Diamond League field, they have under their name pace pace. Yeah. So they are, are restricted to like if they win if they finish the race, they probably like a, like they can. Oh, they're not going to jump and take them off. Yeah, but it doesn't count towards anything. Interesting. So we'll, so we'll see if you're entered or not properly on Friday. Well, you I mean, so. then, Citrus Citrus Mag did put me up as entered because they were like kind of saying, oh yeah, last time. OSC was here, Ollie Hall, George Beamish ran these times. So it, it made it sound like I was I mean, if they made it. an Instagram post about it, it's as official as it gets, so... Particularly if it's from Citrus, so... Exactly, so... I would say... Yeah, well, just to make that clear, I'm pacing the boys to... Hopefully to 4K. And um, and then uh, 1K, I'm going to drop them all. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sitting um, I, will, I will veer off and start screaming at them like Dathan. Yeah. Well, I think you probably have to get to your workout. Oh yeah, true. I won't have much time again. You won't be able to watch the finish. You gotta go straight to the treadmill. Straight to the treadmill. Yeah. Ten, ten miles. Ten, ten by ten by pint of beer at one minute recovery yeah. at the pub <laughs> straight afterwards. Um, uh, yeah, but no, looking forward to that for the men and the women. And Sage is going for a 
Well, she's she's made a claim to go for the Australian Australian, Australian yeah, yeah. The, Amer- the Australian one K record, the American one K uh, record in New York. Yeah. What is it? Do we know what it is? I think. Again, yeah, again, citrus. Yeah. Sauce. Uh, who who has that time? The one K. Absolutely not. I clue. saw. I saw. I mean, if you go on Citrus Mag, they they posted the name. I all I remember is that it was in two thousand and four, and I was like, the name. How whatever was it was, no one run there? Yeah, I don't think people would try. I don't know. It's yeah. not many one Ks you can do indoors That's true yeah. the name was like a very plain name no offense to whoever, to whoever the name is i i can think of a lot of names that are playing i feel like i think mo could have done that every weekend since she started running yeah probably if but she wanted to like not, even, not even her like rg wilson some like, maybe Raven Rogers, something that, like, all those people girls just on really fast they probably just never do it all right yeah. the name is jen toomey never caitlin toomey's mom <laughs> it's a joke it's a yeah. joke <laughs> Not your best work. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I thought Dewey, that was I thought Dewey. that was land way 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 than I than I anticipated, and then I like realized that's not a good joke. But yeah, what's her name again? Jane. Jen Toomey. Jane Toomey. Jen. Jen. <clears throat> yeah, Jen Toomey. Jen Toomey. Yeah, I guess that's. But not all the boys right. are running the five k in Boston. No, Mario and Yara on the three k. Right. The, the rookies, as they've been called today by Andy Weeding. They're just not rookies, bro. Those guys are so good. They're making a rookie video as we speak. So hey, I love how they're rookies. Insider knowledge. Inside, insider knowledge. Spoiler alert. They are rookies, but to be honest, is this for they running? 3K. They're running a 3K. Yeah. Do, what do you think they can do? In the My prediction is predictions. that Yared paces Bosley to break Yared's collegiate record. <laughs> Oh, but do you reckon Bosley beats Yarrow? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. beats Bosley, yeah. I think... I don't think... I think they... Yarrow's not going to lose. <laughs> <Just, yeah. laughs> Sorry, I know how fit Drew is, but I don't think that's happening. But I, I do think Drew can break the collegiate record. What is the collegiate record right now? 738? 30... 738.7, yeah. I think. Yeah. By Yarrow. At Boston. In Boston. He did that solo too, didn't he? He had pacing, I think, for a mile. Yeah, I think the second half was solo. So impressive. Um... But I so, think so you crush. think you'll pace him to it, but do you, what do you reckon, like, yeah, it's time will end up being PB I think, then? I think he'll run probably like 34, 35 or yeah. something. I, I guess it all depends on how fast the first half of the race yeah, is. Yeah, because you like, there's only, much, so, only so much you can, like, catch up, up on, right? Mm-hmm. But clearly, I mean, so everyone is extremely fit right now, like, next level type fitness. Probably everyone would have seen this by now. Citrus's mags, citrus's mags, citrus Magnolia. mags uh workout video from the boys from yesterday in the what's that place called the ipf mm. what the the place where they have all the pictures of colorado people on the walls yeah coach, coach primes coach primes training yeah. facility yeah, yeah. this the indoor track so the guys did a workout yesterday which is this is like a pretty classic well it's a pretty classic, <laughs> pretty classic. Like, <laughs> we do this every couple of weeks yeah. well uh, <laughs> pretty initially, standard, actually. <laughs> initially it was a pretty classic like get ready for a big 5k type workout because i think initially the mile was meant to be a cent, like pretty close to 5k race pace mm. and then something happened blah 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 blah, and then they ran 357 <laughs> no no okay let, let, let's break down what happened because it actually is pretty <laughs> it was fun rust, it was a rust bus so what happened yeah. was so ritz sends in in the group chat like everyone's workouts and then he sends in the mile that we do at the start so initially it was 408 in, in the final, final search. search right yeah. and then he went down to 406 and then he put these splits here and then joe corrects him and says those splits are 402 with yeah. the splits we have was i think it was 60 it was 62 62 61 60 59 which is 406 and then we added those up and we're like this is just that's yeah, not 406 then we get to practice and then Dathan changes it again and says oh we're gonna run 404 and it's the classic like when you can feel the anticipation like we have citrus filming the workout everyone's like warming up together and i can feel like we're all talking about how we're gonna run this start of this first rep it's just it's a classic like Riss is just planning this out so we run something stupid yeah it's exactly what we did but it was really well paced <laughs> He probably um, told Robbie that actually just ignore those splits. Well, Robbie ran run really fucking fast. High. He actually did. He so he, he ran it. he ran it really well. And then Perfect Joe went around sixty, and then I went fifty nine, and then yeah, I went fifty eight. I think something like that. So like the way the pacing was was like we're gonna take a lap each. So Dathan goes, okay, Robbie, you take the first lap. Joe, you take the second lap. It's four hundred. Joe, you take the second four hundred. Ollie, take the third four hundred yard. Finish it off. And um, yeah, it was it was quite when we crossed the line. I didn't. It was quite, I just, I thought it was hilarious because I was just hearing Jonas going, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Is that what happened? I think, yeah. Jonas, I think Jonas PR'd by like 10 seconds. Yeah, Jonas is <laughs> going, oh my goodness. And then all of a sudden we just realized that we got six guys under four minutes for 1600 meters. Some people have been quoting saying it's not that impressive, but I think the cool thing about it is 
we were able to do that together as a team and it was a training exercise no one was racing no one was pushing it we were pretty controlled and then going into like doing the rest of our sessions like everyone was just super like kind of chimed in ready to go so i thought it was a really cool uh workout what was the rest of the workout so we did three by two k for me george Jonas, and joe and it was mostly at three minute k's so yeah. yeah so it was it wasn't like nothing crazy but it was just keeping the legs rolling getting in a bit of threshold and then um yared and mario did the exact same except they did 1600 ex- except for 2k then we all grouped up and did four by 200 at 28 29 so very solid workout yeah but yeah that's a quick mile to run at altitude how bad do you feel for sam parsons um well this is the thing so i <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, like probably about 100 years ago i ran 356 in a unofficial time trial outdoors in iowa with joe in 258 so technically sam has the official state record well, the, and the still does and still does is he does he <laughs> Does he have the overall yeah. state record outdoors indoors? Yeah, it's the fastest anybody's yeah. run in Colorado. It, it officially, it's officially. his four minutes. But we also ran a sixteen hundred. It wasn't a mile. However, oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that. The way it was run, the way we set it up, and it was an effort. We're not trying to run, so, you know, we're not, we're not trying to run a, a balls out mile rep. So it's it's interesting because Parsons also went later to run the three k. Um, after that mile, right, that sub four mile and a four by four hundred. Yeah, good night so i mean four flat is very impressive it sounds like for him it was a workout as well as us so really the only th- difference he had from us was that we had six guys running together whereas i think i didn't go to the meet but i'm guessing he was by himself for that yeah he probably he won by like 10 seconds though. yeah he probably had a pace for like maybe 800 if he's lucky yeah so it's quite a difficult so way to do it, it. It's, yeah. a, it's a different way to do it so I, I i think obviously you know i'm sure there's a bit of cheeky banter back and forth between you know doing that and then you know passing seeing it but in, in general, it's a very different situation. And for him, it was a workout too, because he had a 3K and then he did a 4x4. Four four. And for us, it's like it's the same. We did our th- threshold in our 200s. I just think when you look at, I'm going to be biased and brag about our team now, because if I think if you look at it, you have six guys that are from uh, different events, uh, this start this early in the season, running that type of effort, controlled and relaxed, is like really, for me, very impressive to see. It is impressive. And I'm, I'm pretty ecstatic for Dathan, because I think when Dathan sees that, like when you're when you're a coach and you can see your athletes doing that and being in that situation is like pretty cool. So it was good to be part of. Um, Joe let it out of the bag pretty early because he literally posted on Strava straight away, and I got a message from Drew Hunter saying, "Hey, how's that sub four at, at practice?" And I was like, "How the fuck do you know about that?" I'm just literally leaving the. He track. posted on Strava before the threshold. <laughs> it was already Probably, on there. yeah. I'm pretty sure he did. He did? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh no. my god. So like, there you go. Like, and I think I think Citrus are going to try and post it later on. Yeah. Um, but um, they got it out there. I mean, it is just training. I guess you got to see how the races go but clearly all signs are uh, looking very, all signs very indicate good. good good races coming up for the yeah boys. So and the girls how do you too. feel about the conversion i think that's pretty solid 353 that's, oh, but that's okay people okay what i want to be negative here it was 1600 meters and it was it was a progressive <laughs> effort I, I we didn't run a mile in a time trial setting people are gonna go oh that was a time trial mile it wasn't because we didn't run a mile and it wasn't a time trial <laughs> We did <laughs> The way you said that was hilarious. We didn't. Firstly, we didn't run a mile. We didn't, we didn't run so a mile. So you're an idiot for even saying that. We were in a 1,600 <laughs> yeah. meters. So like the way Citrus says, oh, you know, six guys on the sub four for, for, for this workout. It's like you're misleading people because it's the Well, mile. they're not. Oh, did they say the mile? I don't think they, they don't say, say anything. It, it, if you look in the... They do say 1,600 say later, but they just, they just say sub four in the title. Yeah, but you can't blame them for that. No, because it's a clickbait, right? Yeah, you got to do that. But... Uh, th- that could have just been oh, a one, could have been a one k. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. People are like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a. <laughs> you would have been a really good draw. Really People are like, oh, it's a really three fifty three conversion for a mile, but like, it's like it's not because we ran at sixteen hundred meters. We ran at three fifty seven, three fifty eight, and we didn't run it as a time trial. It was more of a progressive effort that we did together, and we ran too fast. Hmm. And I know that, that sounds time, that... like I'm being a dickhead, but it's just like for me. If we wanted to run a mile time trial, I think it would be extremely interesting, but I, I wouldn't be, I, I don't think anybody would be shocked that six of those guys can break four. It's just that we just, well, how much quick, well, so how much quicker do you think you'd go in a time trial? Cause that seems like a pretty good way to run. That seems like a pretty good way to run a 
like fast mile at altitude me personally if i'm in a race setting and i have the boys with me and we're, we're actually racing i reckon we could run i reckon we could run around 53 52 yeah and it's like quite fast. and that and that's <laughs> and that's with that's with like everything has been it's been raced like in that way like qu- quick out of the gun still quick and fast close I'm you, do, <laughs> you do have to go quick out of the gun and also close fast to run 353 you do yes <laughs> the numbers don't I, think lie. I think a good way to run at altitude is to go out conservatively and then close it down at altitude i think mm. yeah but we're not, at, just, we're not catch- at altitude we're in boulder <laughs> That's a good point. Catches up, catches up to you a lot quicker. That uh, that conversion is crazy because I if maybe it's because of the way we train because we're like big endurance distance runners. But if you told me to run uh, like running a three fifty eight at altitude sounds easier than running a three fifty three at sea level. If you like had to go do it, oh, I think a hundred percent there are people that can run faster. Not necessarily faster altitude, but faster relative to the Relatively. conversion if you're like a if you're a 10k runner and you're super strong you will your conversion will look really good at altitude yeah. um, like two people good examples nothing against them tyler day and even nico are oh, yeah. both crushing in the dome incredible altitude absolutely crushing the dome but it's like almost 10 second conversion but those guys are like they're running a mile from like the strength side of it so it makes sense that you can run fast at altitude if you're going the other direction, mm-hmm. if you're like coming up from like a speed base, it'll be a lot harder. Mm-hmm. And I the think, conversion will be like more accurate. Yeah. I sense. also, I also think like <laughs> you look at the athletes we have, you can't deny these athletes are in- incredible athletes that could run really fast miles. So, you know, it's, these aren't, these aren't college guys. These are athletes that are finishing fourth and fourth in the world at worlds that are running diamond league races. Like, to me like i can see them running that effort because i know they can because they're strong enough they've trained hard enough and they have the mindset to do it um it's just interesting now because i think opportunities to run races at the altitude are slim there's there's not many rate except for the one that sam parsons runs most of the races you're running around at sea level and you run ridiculously fast time so it would be interesting if like there was a meet held at like boulder where it was like much more like a golden meet level where you'd have athletes run a mile and just see what they could do because like you said george you'd have athletes like talade and nico young who are who can run faster at that level and maybe even like push for a really quick time it'd be cool to see that but to answer morgan's question yeah i reckon 53 52 in like the perfect situation i reckon yared and mario Giannis, george and joe i think can all run close to lower 350s under 355 i reckon everyone well i mean well, i can see as well year. i, I mean that, the, yeah. especially when you do it with your teammates it does help but that, that is very quick but uh probably the biggest question is there are you guys gonna be going back to punjab palace is that the one in boston mm, i was wondering that well i mean yeah right <laughs> obviously I don't see why not <laughs> I, I mean, I'd love to. But grab we are some staying. Car. We are staying in a different place. Yeah. Uh, but we, we will we have access to getting like a car or something or. No. Well, if there's anybody in Boston that wants to drive us around, let us know. And we'll, <laughs> specifically uh, to the we'll Punjab Palace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Specifically to Punjab, Punjab. Palace, and then to a bubble tea before the race. Ooh. I will pay for your meal. Do you think it's a crazy move? Say you were on a two or three day trip, like you're about to go on, and the first night you went to a, like an amazing restaurant. Would you ever consider just then going to that same restaurant every single night that you're there and depends. just ordering something different Dep- or maybe ordering the same thing? It depends though, right? Is that like a psycho move? No, I don't think so. If you're I in an area where... I would in a row. See I, see, I have an iron gut. I can eat anything. Yeah. But you take a lot of curry. I, mm, it's interesting because if you're in a good area where there's a lot of different options in restaurants, like you want to explore those, right? If you like love it's food true. and want to try, oh, this Asian place looks great or this Indian place looks great or this italian place looks great whereas like if you're in a place where a lot of the options don't look great but there's one really good place then yeah i'd probably go back to that place just for certainty that i know i'm gonna get a good meal i'm not stressing about it before race Mm -hmm. that's probably the way i would think about it what about you george i don't think i would do it i think i would choose what unless it was like the only good option that's what i'm saying that's pretty much the same as what me yeah i guess boston's not a good example because so, so many good places yeah, so many good places to eat you know yeah you want to explore them all but, but i would like to get back to punjab palace 
We'll, we'll get back there. And some Boba tea. I can't wait to get there and to see Yara just down four curries and be Seriously. like, I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so impressive. Such an impressive specimen. What he can put his body through and just not feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> so no casually. Feeling much <laughs> yeah. I, I told you guys when we raced in Memphis that we went to like a kind of famous diner barbecue type spot and, he, and we each ordered a full rack of ribs and he just crushed his and i was like i was feeling so sick I <laughs> like three quarters it was so classic but yeah so that's uh is there anything else for race week anything uh i guess george what how are you feeling going into the race um you know in the way in the wise words of our our, our prophet mike smith if I can, if I can sleep at night, then I've let go of the outcome. <laughs> you guys should listen to. Let Citrus me think, Meg, let me think about Smith, that more. Right? I'm so, trying to break that down. That's going to keep me up at night now. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be the opposite. <laughs> well, it's going to keep me up at night. I'm pretty sure that there are times where I haven't let go of something, but I've still managed to fall asleep. <laughs> that's definitely me as well. <laughs> no, um, that's me saying I'm not as I'm trying not to think about yeah, not the outcome. I'm also trying very hard not to run this event at worlds this year so uh <laughs> the 5k yes yeah, so, so you might stop right before this is not super line. important you might start right before this time i'm the trying finish to run, line, i'm trying to run any other event than this one um so no just looking forward to a nice trip to boston yeah look look forward to george running the uh, 400 meter hurdles uh, <laughs> yeah. coming up soon <laughs> in, here, in the outdoor in the season you'll see george in the 400 meter hurdles but that yeah, that uh the first lap last night was the f- fastest 400 I've run since fifth lap, I think. What about the second lap? Yeah, that was next. Third lap? Yeah, next lap. And then the fourth lap? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So It's always cool when it goes like um, that. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see if that did the trick or not. Yeah, I mean, you're excited I'm to race though, right? Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then there we go. That's what matters. Yeah. That's what matters. It's a good way to get out there. Yeah, like, just, just have a hit out, have some fun. Like, I mean, that's the one cool thing about Boston is it's just a cool track to race at. And... Um, there's not Especially many your first one yeah and there's not many races we get to do like kind of similar to the college season where you get to see, get to see college kids and like be able to race with them and obviously there's that thing of like oh college kid beating pros and all that sort of garbage but i like being able to go back and like see college kids race. i know i just enjoy it because it's a bit of nostalgia and nice to be able to like in- integrate with them a little bit because most of the races we do for the rest of the season it's just all professional races so do you know what i am sad about apparently olin is no longer doing the 5k and olin i was looking Hancock? forward to that rematch why is that? Heck yeah. Apparently he's running 3K instead or something. Oh, okay. He wants Jared Scalp. I'm disappointed. Scalp and yeah. Scalp, yeah. I like racing. Well, I think what we did after like, what we did to him across, he's like, Yeah, oh, I was looking better, forward to that. Go down rematch to 3K I was just kidding with Owen. But uh, no, I'm excited to see Owen on a 3K. I reckon he could run pretty well. Hey, so what other pros are in the 5K? Um, Matt Sensiewicz, Craig Ingalls, <laughs> um, <laughs> Ingi, Hingi, and Jingi. Galen Rupp. Uh, Galen Rupp. <laughs> Dathan Bikili, <laughs> Dathan's making a comeback. <laughs> Kipchoge, Kipchoge, um, Ryan Hall, um, Nick Simmons, Andrew <laughs> Weeding. <laughs> so everyone, just most the people that matter, you know, yeah. the people that matter. Um, everyone's gonna be there. I uh, I know Parsons is doing it. We got oh, some yeah. very nice track club. Very very nice track clubs. Um, if you wanna check out some good content, check out their YouTube uh, video. Yeah. Um, okay, I actually do like them, man. I gotta say, I got the biggest soft spot for Hobbs. Hobbs Kessler. Kessler. Yeah, <laughs> I just, see the bowl cut for me. You can't not support Hobbs. I Kessler. got the biggest. I freaking love the bowl cut. He man. makes me so happy. Yeah. Is Ribbit running? Probably Ribby? not. Um. Oh no, he's running at Dr. Sanders. I think he's running. The no, he's hosting his own meet. Oh, uh, they're running the lilacs. Yeah. Small, small school, big dreams meet. Yeah, yeah in Spokane. Uh, yeah, in Spokane. Small um, town, small town, big dreams. Small town, big dreams meet. Small um, meet, small meet, small, small meet, big dreams. Big town, small meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small meet. It's not a big deal. It's a pretty big town. Though. <laughs> big town, small meet. That was pretty much uh, world championships in Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was world champs in Eugene. That's small meet. Yeah, small, meet. Town, small, small meet. town, small meet. Small town, big meet. Small town, big meet. <laughs> yeah, that's the opposite. Well, small town, small meet. Small town, small meet. Yeah, <laughs> triple small, small place. I think small, God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but um. Yeah, I guess no. you'll find out when you get we'll, to the we'll start find line. We'll find out when we get there. But, uh, hopefully no one gets in my way when I'm pacing. I don't think anyone will. I'll just probably go, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, I got to be there. Based on based on how effectively you can get to the front <laughs> of a race against the best 1,500 meter runners in the world, I think in this setting, you'll do just fine. I should be right. Yeah. You should be okay. Um, but yeah, no, should be should be a good time. I'm excited for the men and the women. Yeah. Uh, Alicia's, what's Alicia right? 
Just so we can recap. What the They're doing. doing all a mile. I all believe. a mile. Yeah. I think everyone except for Sage. And whoever, and you have to win that mile. I think Nathan said, "Only get cut from the team." So that's a lot of pressure. Best luck to the women. Uh, it's the same with the five k for the guys too. <clears throat> um, and pacing, I have to pace correctly, otherwise so you get do, cut. Because you get the an auto bid to the want to make a mile. Does so that mean bid? if you win, Doctor Sanders? Oh, really? oh yeah, 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 the wild card. If yeah. Alicia wins the mile, do you think she'll do both events? No, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, she would get into the mile if she wanted to get yeah, into the mile. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure she could just do that if she wanted. She it depends on like I think what Ritz probably, wants to do. Ritz could probably, I'd say Ritz thinks she's probably. Yeah, good I mean, for Dope I'm pretty sure. Ends. I'm pretty sure Ritz right now probably thinks she can go and run like a two ten marathon. So, in general, she could do what she wants. I think it just. I think Doctor Sanders would be just a good indication for her for the three k. Well, she's got big. Not spoiler alert. I know she's got big goals for that three k at Milrose. Yeah, she wants to run seven forty three. I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> There should uh, be more meets that have auto bids for I do. That's I do cool. like that cool. I like uh, that. That, that would be cool idea. if you could figure out a way to do it for a Diamond League. What it, do you guys think about that? Hmm. Like you would have like a meet, maybe a gold label meet where there's certain race. Um, if you win that race, you get an auto bid to that country's Diamond League. For example, say there's a big gold meet in, um, <clears throat> in, uh, in Italy, right? And then you can, if you win that race, you get to run it at the Rome Diamond League. That would be a cool thing, I think. Do you mm-hmm. think it's more cool if some random wins it that like shouldn't be in the race and, yep. they, and then they just get destroyed yeah because like but what could yep. happen what often probably would happen is just like someone who was already going to be in the race i guess not in the diamond league setup because it's the, very yeah. hard to get into those races yeah but, i would i would love it for just like some guy that maybe maybe runs like 338 or 337 right and he wins yeah. and he gets to run the diamond league like for him that's like he gets to run the diamond league like it, he maybe runs 336 runs the pb but he gets smashed yeah well not smashed i'd say he maybe gets Last, last in the race right yeah for him i don't think he's gonna look back at it and go oh i shouldn't have done that diamond league yeah you know no that's an opportunity that would be pretty cool um so i do like that idea just having a wild card there yeah but the cool. women are doing that so excited for them yeah. um don't yeah. worry i'll be here holding down the fort with robbie Morgan, morgan's gonna be holding down the fort with robbie i'll um, be looking after gus yeah so things will be all good but yeah, yeah seasons are getting going see you gus uh very exciting for that excited for that and the races are on so the 5k the boston meet is on friday Mm -hmm. and then the new york action is on saturday and i'm sure you can watch it somewhere maybe we'll post about on our instagram or something flow track i believe flow uh flow flow sports will have it flow sports flow sports um and apple tv new subscription (laughs) Um, paramount plus paramount plus netflix (laughs) lionsgate lionsgate um (laughs) little little spoiler yeah Yeah. lionsgate yeah (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say a few others, but I'm not going to say. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say a few others, but I'm not going to say. It was on Prime. You can um, imagine. Yeah, you can imagine what I was going to say. Yeah. Of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it up on there. Uh, if you want to watch, the title. If you want to watch it illegally, head to my Discord. <laughs> Someone will probably be streaming on it. And then, yeah. oh, I don't know if that'll get... Nah, you didn't get nah, for that. It'll be fine. Come um, on. Come on. Nothing illegal happens there. No. So, yeah, that's uh, the racing. Very excited to do that. Uh, we had a great question inspired by none other than what do you call him before the prophet Mike Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so we, Ollie and I have not listened to it yet. I guess it's in our required reading homework, listening. Well, I'm still, still I'm still recuperating from uh, not being able to get him on our podcast. Still recovering so I'm still recovering from that. But uh, George watched the Mike Smith interview, which I imagine was very soothing to the ears, and came up with a great question for us. Which is what is the the best movie to watch pre race if you could only watch the same movie for the rest of your life? Because on that podcast, Mike Smith revealed that he watches Armageddon the night before. Is it just Enter the Blade? Just Enter the Blade. Once a year. Once a year. Did he do that when you were there? Did you know about this? I actually didn't. Is this a new tradition, old tradition? He didn't tell me exactly how many years he'd been doing it. Maybe it was sounds like a while. Yeah, and we've we've mentioned before about how. Our teammate Mario watches Gladiator, Gladiator a lot. Gladiator, Gladiator, yeah. Maximus. Did he just watch it? The three the f- rounds of Worlds. I think he did the two rounds. I think he did the semis and the finals. Really? I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe he did it three times in a row. But I don't know if he still does it or not. Because I was kind of saying this before. I feel like that's one of those things where you want to save that for, like Mike Smith saves saves uh, he saves mm. that for Enter the Blade. Yeah, it's only one night a year. Yeah, if you did it every race. Like, cause I used to have a kind of list of probably like 
three or four YouTube videos I would watch before a race to get me pumped up. And I would actively not watch them sometimes if I didn't want to make too big of a deal out of a race. <laughs> If Smart. that makes sense. Mm. If I want it to be more casual. So if it was just like a Rust Buster or something. If it was just a Rust Buster. If I was just running a 5K BU, I probably wouldn't have watched it. <laughs> you probably didn't need to. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have watched it. The track does all the work. You don't need to be motivated. Uh, so, but if you were to have to watch one all the time, would you want to watch like a serious one that gets you in the mood or just like a funny one that you know you're going to like enjoy? Because that's mm. pretty tough. <clears throat> well, I, see, I, I would watch... A, a, a series not a series like a, a a couple of movies like that but uh, uh, John Wick you're not allowed to do that yeah. John Wick <laughs> so I, I would do that saying John Wick. However, I could tell I could however, see by the look in his eyes yeah it's John, only, Wick. It's only, John Wick 1, 2 and 3 and then 4 it's coming out in theaters guys check it out um, <laughs> not sponsored not sponsored by me. I'm not in the movie at all I'm not one of the stuntmen um, yeah well if that's the case and that's written off which is what I would do you'd watch all four in one night yeah. <laughs> or like during the day, like I'd travel, I'd watch the first, like I'd plan it out. I'd watch the first one during like the travel and then I'd watch the second one, uh, maybe the night, like the night before pre-meet and yeah, then pre-meet and then watch the third one. That's a lot uh, of kung fu to take in. before the race. <laughs> 24 then, hours. Then John Wick 4, I would watch right before the race. So that's how I'd play it out. But if that's the case, for, for me, I think I'd go more serious because the, the funny ones, I feel like the jokes would get old if you're doing it every single time. The movie for me would be Drive, um, mm. which is a neo-noir film featuring Ryan Gosling. It's one of my favorite films to watch just because of like, I don't know, it's just a cool movie and he's just a cool dude in it and he's just like, doesn't give a fuck. Um, that's actually, that's great. And he has like, and I just, the style of the movie and the way it's, I feel like it's one of those movies you can always rewatch. So that would be my film. Um, if it was going to be a funny one, I had to pick a funny one. Um, I'm definitely picking 21 Jump Street. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. <laughs> 21 Jump Street. You know, I, I watched the first half of 22 Jump Street last night. It's not as good as I remember. Mm. It's like the, the like the first five minutes was really funny because when they're pretending to be <laughs> My gangsters. name's Jeff. Yeah, like yeah. that bit's really funny. Then after <laughs> that. that really funny. The, the, funny, <laughs> the funniest part is when he... When they find, find out, out he's banging, banging yeah, the chief daughter. captain's daughter. That's what twenty two jumps is great, actually. Twenty two is great, but twenty one is better. So yeah, good. Twenty one like it is. is just, it's yeah. hard to match that. Yeah, just, which is like they're super, they're super meta in the movie. They literally because they have or Zoolander. So that was gonna be my pick, mm. but they're super meta. Where in twenty two jumps, they joke about because they're talking with uh, what's the guy from Parks and Rex. The Ron, Ron, Ron Swanson, uh, Ron Swanson um, Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. Yeah. They talk. He has like one scene in each of the movies, and both of them are just like them being super meta, ripping into how like in the first one it's them ripping into how it's a reboot because you know how it's a it's a reboot of like an old TV show the that had, like yeah. And he's in actually day. in the film later on. So good. And then the second one is them just talking about how it's not going to work because they can't reboot it. It's yeah, gonna be the exact just same. copying the same jokes. Yeah. And then they moved down to 22 Jump Street because the 21 Jump Street was like full clothes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a stupid film, but back. I would say if I'm going to pick a film, Drive, 2011, Ryan Gosling, uh, probably one of my favorite films. Yeah. Dude, Zoolander was going to be my pick. Well, no, that's... no, my pick is Drive. It's not okay. Zoolander. Okay. But I was just thinking of like the movies that I would pick if I had to pick a funny one. Uh, yeah. I think if it was funny, I would go Zoolander. Uh, I would go between Zoolander matrix 2 reloaded good film good film <laughs> remember the titans yeah remember the titans i, I haven't sport. seen any of those four movies really drive zoolander matrix they're, they're all classics remember the titans so remember the titans is like that's the most that's emotional a football one, one right yeah. yeah and that's like actually real emotional that one so would get you pumped up yeah, for a race that's like probably that's for the big races i guess that mm. one because that's like really emotional and then zoolander is just like one of the funniest movies ever so i sure that we could all i sorry i keep Chiming in on this, a show that we could all appreciate though, if we're going to watch a show together, is Ted Lasso, for race. I think that would be season one. Ted Lasso would just gets you in a good mood, mm. just optimist, but then wanting to get after it, you know. Yeah, very optimistic. The perfect, the perfect we'll balance. The perfect balance. George, it's coming out soon. I know season three. Season actually, actually. still. Wow. This spring apparently. I shouldn't have started this question because now I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> is this an every? Is this an every race, or are we still doing yeah, once a year? I think we're going every race. But <laughs> every if, race. if you have, race. if you have one that you would only select for. A, once a year then i think i don't know why the three I, okay i thought of between if it was like the funny one maybe like daisy and confused oh, oh. i would pick that as well and I then forgot about but Dazed if i confused. needed like she has another bit like rambo 
Rambo? I, wait, I've which never one? seen the Rambo. first one. Okay, I actually don't even know which one I've seen. How many are there? There's a lot. Right? There's a lot. Yeah. The first I feel like one I've seen like Rambo really five. Iconic. Is there a lot of Rambos? How many yeah. are there? How many Rambos and how Rambo many Rockies one, did he Rambo, make? Rambo one, Rambo two, Rambo three, uh, Ram, Ra, Rambo like res, like there's like a old one and then there's a new one. It's Rambo Last Stand. So it's five. And how many Rockies are there? Like four uh, or five? Rocky one, Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four, Rocky four, Rocky Balboa, Creed one, Creed two, seven. That's in the same series. It's in the same universe. I haven't seen a single one of those either. Rocky uh, Creed either. three though is the first. It's gonna be the first film without Rocky Balboa in it. Because there's some sort of not fight, but there's some sort of. And that, is that Sylvester Stallone? Uh, so he's, he's, he's not. He's in all those seven. He's in the Rockies and Rainbow. Yeah, he's like the yeah. same he's guy. He's the main character. He's the main character and all that stuff. Yeah. How does he like remember if he's playing Rocky? <laughs> I think he's, he's always playing, playing himself. himself. He's playing. He's, playing, he's, he's just playing the same. The whole time. He's just <laughs> playing the same person. Like <laughs> some point, it's like hungry and fighting. Just for, intense. Yeah, yeah, fighting for freedom or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, no, that's it. Yeah. Days and Confused is another one that I could watch every single because that is so like good. that's that might be overall you, my favorite movie of all time. You cool man. Yeah. <laughs> be mean, a lot cooler if you did. It's like, do you ever join you man? No. Be a lot cooler if you did. That's just like a funny movie. I don't yeah. think I've I don't think I've told this on the podcast. I think I've told you guys this before that the that's like a big Austin movie. The director is it Richard Linkletter is like local from Austin. And when I was there, when I sprained my ankle, actually, um, with Nick Harris, we went and stalked the director's house. That's how into it we were. We went and like walked around the front of his house and didn't do anything, but we saw like his wife in the garden. I feel like Nick Harris could easily be in that movie. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. He's got the style. He's got the style and the look for it. For sure. He could be in a lot of those movies, but yeah. So that's, um, a lot of pre-race stuff. I don't know. Is that, I feel like. That's probably a good spot to end it today. What do you guys think? Anything else to share with our beautiful fans, listeners? Uh, come not out much to else. the track on Friday. Yeah, yeah. come come to the come hang out. Come hang out. Bring a Mountain Dew. Yeah, bring a Mountain bring Dew. A Dew. I've signed four Mountain Dews so far. Got to make sure you, the, you guys bring some stickers. We'll have stickers. Mm-hmm. We'll have stickers available. They're um, in my bag already. I leave them in my bag. I've, so I'm ready at all times. I gave all mine away in Australia, so hopefully <laughs> I can uh, get a restock. But... Yeah, no, come out to the track. Don't be shy. Come say hello. Um, call us Coffee Club. Love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I call, mean, call I, me I, Keith. I, call me Keith. That was, a, that, was a, that was a great thing about going back to Australia. No one called me by my name. Just call me Keith. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, come out, check it out. The boys are going to go and rip a cool 5K. It would be great to have you guys out there supporting and cheering us on. So. Yeah. Hell yeah. Very excited for all that. And uh, with that, I think that's it for episode 70. Thank you very much for everyone for listening. We'll see you guys next week.